Ladies and gentlemen, the next generation of desktop processors from both AMD and Intel are scheduled to launch next year. AMD will bring higher core counts according to the rumors as well as, yes, more IPC and also higher clock frequency. Meanwhile, Intel also will increase its core counts, but perhaps just as importantly, it will no longer allow AMD to have the advantage of X3D cache and also be adopting this technology for Nova Lake. There is a lot of stuff to get through in today's video with some very intriguing tidbits from both companies that have leaked online and also some official confirmations as well. We're going to get into all of this plus more after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which is not activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Now, typically I prefer to do stories alphabetically, but today I'm gonna to do the reverse and cover Intel first because I actually think it helps set the stage with what AMD will be doing with its higher core counts for Zen 6. So basically speaking, Intel have really seen that AMD uh, X3D technology has just given them a big, it, it's just let, allowed them to leapfrog in gaming with CPUs such as the 5800 X3D still being very relevant now. Um, even if you're pairing it with a pretty high-end GPU such as an RTX 4080 Super, 4090, hell, even a 5090 to be honest with you, in many games, yeah, you're going to get slightly lower 1% FPS or what have you, but if you're throwing on ray tracing and doing all the, the latest stuff for very demanding games at 4K, are you really going to notice it in something that's single-player focused like Cyberpunk? Maybe if you're benchmarking, but eh. I think that 8 cores is probably going to be enough to be relevant as well for quite some time. So basically the 5800X3D and other, uh, other CPUs since that from AMD have really just absolutely been... It, it's just been a thorn in Intel's side and Intel doesn't allow want this to allow to continue. Pat Gelsinger has actually uh, previously, although obviously he's no longer at the company, had previously hinted that they were looking at this technology and now there seems to be some confirmation. I won't give credit to WCCF Tech here because they spotted this, but at a recent Direct Connect 2025 event, the firm unveiled Intel 18A PT Process Node, and this, uh, along with other technologies, was shown off, but this specific one mentions the next generation 3D IC, or 3D Integrated Circuit. This allows uh, pass-through TSVs um, along with its Fovros technology. Now, what this basically means, according to a lot of the rumors and reports, is that the, the, the leaks for Nova Lake are almost certainly true. Now, Nova Lake uh, basically will increase its core counts to 52. That's a combination, of course, of performance as well as energy efficient cores. But one of the rumors, uh, and I've put this out as well, is that basically there are going to be two compute chiplets on Nova Lake, and one of those will connect up using this technology anyway to the tile, you know, the, the cache tile. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with this in terms of AMD versus Intel's gaming performance. Obviously, there are a lot of other elements to it, or at least the rest of the architecture itself. Ultimately, also, AMD and Intel are going a very different approach. Um, it seems Nova Lake also won't be utilizing things like, well, hyperthreading. So, I, I'll be very curious to see how the performance graphs end up and also uh, across a myriad of other applications, not least of which productivity. But that's not just all of it for Nova Lake. There's also a small other tip that I want to give you guys. X86 is dead and back. Also spotted a shipping manifest with a jig. Now, basically, this seems to be Intel... Um, 
allowing motherboard manufacturers and everyone else involved in the manufacturing of this to essentially help produce the the socket and other stuff that goes in now this is obviously not a prototype cpu this is essentially just a lump of plastic for lack of a better term and it essentially allows them to manufacture things like the cooler and other things for testing um, obviously nova lake is going to be on a different socket because it's intel and they don't want to stick to a single socket for more than like five seconds i would also make a very good argument that one of the reasons that AMD have been pretty successful in the desktop market is also because they have stuck with AM4 and now AM5 for a couple of generations. Zen 6 also seems to be sticking with AM5. I don't know about Zen 7. I haven't been able to find out anything about that. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a new socket, but I'm not 100% certain, so eh. Um, but it's going to be very interesting, to be honest with you, to see how long after... Uh, the 18 uh what is it, 1851 socket comes around to see how long intel actually sticks with that speaking of zen 6 though amd for a very long time have had eight cores per ccd for the desktop so for example if you were to take a just you know quick overview of let's say uh ryzen 9950 x 3d or even 9950 x you have two ccds and each of those of course is well eight cores so two eights are 16 and you can go back you know multiple uh, zen generations and it's pretty much been the same the rumor is though that medusa which is the desktop uh, slash mobile variant of zen 6 will actually change things around so rather than eight cores per ccd it's going to go up to 12. now a very interesting leak has popped up and Beidou. now this is for venice which is obviously not the same you know final configuration as what you have in medusa but even so it does lend a lot of credibility that we're going to see an increase in core count for the desktop that's assuming this image is genuine now as you can see from the image on Beidou unfortunately you can't really make out the text too well including the amount of cache that uh, is plonked in the middle there but there are almost certainly 12 uh, cores on the CCD now I do want to again make this abundantly clear this is for Venice which is a server variant but I think it adds a lot of credibility that Medusa uh, for the desktop slash uh, mobile client will also be increasing the core counts. And I think also, just from a logical standpoint, if you were to again look back at Nova Lake raising the core counts, yeah, some applications, for example, games, they're not going to really go across a ton of CPU cores. You still have to have a really good single thread performance. But I don't think AMD are just going to want to get slapped in the face by Intel in multi-thread as well. It's going to be very curious to see how the benchmarks play out when heavy multi-threading is being used on both of these things. But um, I am actually pretty confident that Zen 6 is going to be very impressive. While the IPC gains in you know hard numbers are not massive, I've heard around 10-ish percent, 10 to 15 percent, but it's very early at this stage. And also with IPC gains, they can of course fluctuate based on what the workload is. For example, is it heavy integer based? Is it just kind of more floating point? Is it AVA? You get the idea. And so it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD does because also there are so many changes across the IO. AMD just want to reduce latency and keep those cores fed, which was a really big problem with Zen 5. I also just want to mention a couple of other very quick updates in this video since I've got you here. The RTX 5060 for both mobile as well as desktop is confirmed to launch on the 19th of may it's going to be from 299 um nvidia have also provided some data in terms of performance and they are comparing the rtx 5060 against the rtx 3060 and also 2060 as well as the 4060 um, they are testing their normal selection of games alan awake black myth wukong cyberpunk Hogwarts, Avowed, Marvel Rivals, Stalker, and Resident Evil 4. Unfortunately, the majority of these games are leveraging things such as multi-frame generation and so on and so on. Uh, one game, however, we can look to is Resident Evil 4, 
which obviously does not support things like multi-frame generation. It does have FSR, however, and uh, that gives you some idea of how it performs against the 4060 as well as the other uh, aforementioned cards. Uh, the price here is allegedly going to be $299. I say allegedly because, well, you know, retailer gouging and stuff like that. This is an 8 gigabyte card, but the reality is this is a GPU that's going to find itself generally at 1080p, potentially, you know, entry level 1440p. I don't mind 8 gigabytes so much for this card as I did with the 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte. With that said, would I have liked to see more RAM? Of course, you know, 12 gigabytes would have been fantastic, but here we are. With that said, guys, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now. Yeah.